Hello and welcome back, friends. We're glad you've joined us today. You're probably saying this looks a little bit different from the usual introduction. Uh, so that's the perfect place to begin. What we don't see before you is our old uh, screenshot of our helpline and the COVID response uh, because we're entering into a new era, which is exciting to exciting place to begin. But I am delighted you're here. My name is Michael Yates. I'm the host of this uh, podcast, and I have the distinct pleasure of having the artiste <laughs> who is behind our new tile and uh, intro, Kaylee Peevler. Good to have you back. Yes, thank you. Glad to be back. Yeah. So what was it uh, back? Uh, I mean, it was had to be like in one of the first few yeah, episodes. Yeah, February. Yeah. 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 Talking about... Uh, what we were doing with the donation drive mm -hmm. and things of that sort. So before we jump into the topic today of Behavioral Health Safety Net, uh, I do want to draw our viewers' attention to the fact that we do have a new backdrop here, and uh, we are committed to continuing to provide this as a community resource, uh, not only for our staff, for consumers of Ridgeview services, but for the general public. Uh, we feel it's a helpful, easy way just to get some content mm -hmm. out there related, not so much to clinical things all the time, but to the human condition, mm -hmm. uh, which we globally share, and things that promote overall mental health optimization and well-being is always a good thing to talk about. Right. Now, at the end of this particular episode, we're going to try to leave a little bit of space to also introduce what? The Behavioral Health Safety Net campaign, media campaign that we have um, from the Department of Mental Health Services. So it just kind of gives everyone a, hey, this is the program um, and where you can uh, receive more information and about the program. People may see that broadcast not only on local TV, but... Yeah, it will be statewide until the end of, hopefully the end of June. So, and it'll be on all the social media platforms. So you'll, you'll be seeing it a lot. <laughs> all right. Very good. So that, that just a little teaser for you to mm -hmm. stick around after we sign off and it'll be about a 30 second public service announcement, right? Yes. Well, okay, so uh, let's begin at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> tell us what your role is here at Ridgeview. Okay. Um, well, I am the Children and Youth Behavioral Health Safety Net Outreach Coordinator. And this program or this grant specifically is for is to provide mental health services for children between uh, 3 and 17 that may be underinsured or may not have insurance at all. Now, has that changed? Didn't wasn't there an uh, an adjustment to some of those qualifications? Yes. So, um, with everything going on with the pandemic and being a new uh, program, they're constantly changing and seeing what works, what doesn't, what it what. Um, a big need is in the community um, and just statewide. So the Department of Mental Health did expand their eligibility from um, no insurance to under insurance. So underinsured children. So that can be uh, cover kids or any private insurance. Um, a lot of those um, types of insurance may not cover um, a array of services. So with safety net as a secondary or um, another um, avenue to funding, they have access to these services when they didn't with, with the insurance that they primarily had. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that expanded eligibility is really important oh, yeah. to make sure people understand. So uh, tell me a little bit about your role. What, what does an outreach coordinator do? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, so a lot of it is just getting the information out to the public, to the community, and also to our providers. So, And that may not be providers like uh, Ridgeview. It could be you know, a local grocery store, a library, or schools. A lot of it is I'm targeting um, where kids are, so that specific population. So um, 
medical providers is another one. Um, but I am getting the information out to folks, the resource out to folks that, hey, this is a program that Ridgeview participates in, and it is a statewide program. Um, but if any time a kid comes in with no insurance, or maybe they need case management, but again, their insurance doesn't cover that, they can come in for intake and receive that service under the grant. Wonderful. And the geographic area in which you provide that outreach? I would say is mostly in the school system. But it's in, is it limited to our five county service area? For Ridgeview, um, yes, but um, there is pretty much every single county, every single agency in um, statewide is participating in the program. So if someone who resides in Union County, for example, yeah. were to somehow reach out to you, you could connect them to the right person. Yes, yeah, gotcha. yeah. And there is a website, and I know we'll address it at the end of the video, but you can go on that website. It has an entire, you know, state of Tennessee, and it's breaking down into all the counties statewide, and you can click on a certain county, so Union County, and it'll pop up which agency is participating in Safety Net, and you can reach out to the coordinator directly from that website great and i think we'll put that's a good suggestion we'll put that link also in the comments section so okay. that people uh, can have the ease of accessing it that way too mm -hmm. so i mean other ways in which you do outreach though and correct mm -hmm. me if i'm wrong but you you also if there are health fairs uh community events um uh, anti anti-drug coalition functions mm -hmm. Uh, school functions, yes. you can be there as uh, as a resource mm -hmm. for families that may be needing this very thing. Yeah, any any type of events, any pop up events, anything that's going on in the community within the five counties that we serve, I'm going to try to be there. I'm going to sign up <laughs> as much as possible. So I'm getting that um, resource out to if again, if it's staff or if it's direct clients. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's really important to know. So, you know, if we have a partner agency or a, mm. a community agency that may be watching this, listening and wondering, Hmm, I, maybe I need to make sure that Kaylee has an invitation. Yes. <laughs> this is an opportunity to say yes. Invite yep. her. Yes. Yes. And, and please. <laughs> I know it's uh, right cats and dogs mm -hmm. out there as we're recording this but if memory serves you have a function this afternoon right yes which has been postponed ah, so yeah. <laughs> which is good <laughs> right well, so I'll still get to attend that as well okay so they've rescheduled yeah okay, yeah good so I one of the things you know I know enough to be dangerous <laughs> uh, so it's always important that I clarify mm -hmm. uh, so I went to the the state website and I pulled off this flyer. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's just go through some of you. You've made it pretty clear eligibility requirements mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but available services. So there's a list of things mm -hmm. here. Uh, what are you finding to be one of the most helpful services that kids benefit from? I would say the biggest one is therapy. Um, both, you know, family and individual therapy. And then another one is case management. And that's where we're seeing a dip where um, kids that may have private insurance or cover kids don't have access to that service. So it was awesome when they decided to um, expand their eligibility. So then now we can offer that service without, you know, additional cost or anything. Right. There's no barriers to that. So I would say therapy and case management is probably the biggest service um, that is used um, across the state under this grant. And I, I noticed the last bullet, transportation. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? So um, it really depends on the agency, what they offer. Um, there is three different types of tiers, and that's just based on, you know, how much the agency wants to spend on transportation. Um, they give you an allotted amount. Uh, but that can be, you know, t taxi cards or, um, you know, if we use any type of resource um, internally that can transport uh, clients. And that is from wherever the client is to their appointment and back. Okay. So, you know, I always, we say oftentimes around here at Ridgeview, every, everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I think it's it's true and it's a valuable way of acknowledging the the lived experience that you know we all have mm-hmm. so do you have a story of a family or a child that has been recently, you know, benefited from mm-hmm. this important service. Yeah, I think the one story that comes to mind is uh, we had a family that came from a different state, out of state. Um, they came in just to get some type of service, whatever you know it may be, and uh, they didn't have any insurance. Um, and I was able to connect with the family there one on one and let them know, hey, we have this resource. Let's go ahead and utilize it so then um, you can continue with services and you don't have to, you know, worry about the burden of finances or anything like that. So that is probably the one um, story that comes to mind. But I think just overall connecting with clients and with the guardian specifically, um, they're just kind of like a sigh of relief, like, oh, you know, this is just one less thing I have to worry about. And oh, my gosh, I'm so glad that this is um, provided or, you know, this grant is available for my my child so uh definitely a lot of positive you know (laughs) responses to it gotta be an enormous relief Mm -hmm. to know that though they themselves for a variety of reasons uh, maybe they have not been able to access care but they know their child needs it uh again uh, an important resource Mm -hmm. uh is it time limited so it is, um, it is good for a year, but all you need to do is just get an updated assessment. You just need to renew it by getting an updated assessment. So, but yeah, it's, I mean, the grant has, again, it started um, in September and they have extended it to another year. So as of right now, it's still going to go into yeah. um, 2022. Yeah, so. no, that, that's great. We'll, uh, again, make sure this uh, link is available to you in the the notes uh it's also on our website Mm -hmm. that information so uh, readily accessible there as well so uh just as we kind of pivot to close out with the uh, video that we referenced at the outset another uh uh, you're a person of many talents (laughs) uh so not only we've touched on the artistic talent uh you've also been part of the uh, ridgeview donation response effort of uh, in helping folks contribute goods to uh, agencies that that provide a much needed service mm-hmm. uh, for many of the folks that we serve as well. Um, you've also designed a T-shirt, so I see yes. that you're wearing it. Yes, uh, I am wearing it. <laughs> mental health awareness. Yes. yes, hope, healing, and recovery. Yep. Very nice. Uh, logo on it in the back it does say um and the stigma so i like that it has a call call to action yes on our shirt when i wore mine home uh, last friday my daughter said <laughs> i want one of those dad <laughs> do you have one <laughs> i know i don't not yet uh but uh yeah maybe that is something that uh we may look into uh, publishing more of so that that uh, maybe folks have an opportunity yes. to buy it and yeah. support the cause. Yes, I hope it, so. I know on the back it also has the chat mm-hmm. symbol. So mm-hmm. one of the things that the agency has introduced is a way for people to connect mm-hmm. by way of chat yes. on the, on the uh, website. We've really not marketed it. I mm-hmm. mean, it's... Uh, people come to it through an organic process Mm -hmm. of just coming to the website. But I think it's neat that we're now at a point to let folks know, you know, people want to connect in lots of different ways. Some people prefer uh, virtual. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer audio. uh, Some people prefer texting uh, or things like the chat system. So Mm -hmm. uh, neat that we are now allowing for that preference Mm -hmm. for consumers or clients well my last question uh because this is always important Mm -hmm. the work is hard you work hard how does kaylee take care of kaylee (laughs) um well uh fun fact i foster kittens Do you, wait, wait, wait. You foster I foster kittens? kittens. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> My job doesn't stop here. <laughs> I work with animals too. But um, 
yeah, it's it's rewarding. It's a lot. It's hard work, but it's a family effort. So, which is just something my family and I can bond together. So, it's it's really an awesome experience. And, and as of today, how many kittens do you have in? <laughs> I know I'm the cat under lady your now. care. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have three right now. <laughs> wow. One time I had a mama cat and five kittens. <laughs> so. Probably won't be doing that again, but. <laughs> but you're involved in finding these kittens permanency. Yes. A forever home. Yes. Well, should be, uh, it's a parallel experience to a future guest uh, from the Department of Children's Services okay. who will be talking about adoption. Oh, So, perfect. yes, there's a parallel theme emerging yes. here. I, I neglected. You had some stats that you yes. wanted to share. So Yeah. So um, so the Department of Mental Health, we have provider calls once a week, and we get um, a number of how many kids are enrolled into the program. And this program started in September, and year to date, we have 440 children enrolled in this program that Wonderful. are receiving services. Wonderful. Which is amazing. Yeah. So. What the... Uh, I'm so, I apologize. I forgot to ask you about that. Uh, but then I saw your sheet of paper and I remember <laughs> she had some stats. Let's get that good news out there. All right. So uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking care of yourself by also fostering <laughs> kittens. I mean, I learn something new every day. They're just uh, so sweet. <laughs> And thank you for being uh, willing to share some of your other gifts and talents like artwork. And uh, we've, we deeply appreciate it. Yes. Uh, I'm certainly a big fan of your work. Thank so. you. <laughs> and uh, we hope you guys will continue to uh, stay tuned to our latest episode. Please subscribe, ring the bell, uh, share it with friends, family, or folks that you think may benefit. And as we sign off, uh, please just stick around for a moment and watch the 30-second clip from the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services on Behavioral Health Safety Net for Children. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Something's wrong. He just hasn't been the same lately. She's disconnected from her friends and won't tell us why. We don't have insurance, and I don't know where to turn for help. If you're a parent or caregiver in Tennessee and you've noticed changes in your child, help is available. If you're uninsured or your insurance doesn't fully cover behavioral health services, you or anyone in your family can get an appointment and talk to a counselor. Start by visiting tn.gov slash bhsn.